Hey, what is going on everybody? It's me, Earl here. And last week we did the cam plugs in the back of the engine. Today we're gonna be doing the cam magnets in the front. Now, if you guys don't know what a cam magnet is, they're basically solenoids for the variable valve timing this M272 motor offers. It's a pretty complex stuff, but there's four of them and they're very prone to leaking. First things first, we're gonna take off the cover, take off these airbox filter hoses. There you go, that's one. Well, this one's pretty worn out, so take this little hose over here. So taking a look at the condition of the cam magnets and the camshaft position sensor, as you can see, there's a, definitely a lot of gunk or oil seepage around the gasket area, especially on the lower end, which there's a lot of more gunk than I expected it to be. Now, these parts tend to fail around the 100,000 mark, especially after 14 years, even if it's a lower mileage sample of a car, you'll definitely see more of these going out sooner than later. There you go. Here comes one of the plugs for the cam magnet. Just pull it out like that. Just do it. Yeah, there you go. Oh, look at that. You can see there's some oil seepage on it already. Here is a perfect example of why you should always make sure your car is in tip top shape. That is definitely oil seepage. And what that can cause are ghost codes. Because there's liquid in the harness, do some funky stuff into the, uh, the computer. Take that old zip tie out. And then we can officially pry out the harness clip behind this. So now that's completely off, we can now access our cam magnets. So we're gonna go ahead and open this kit from FCP Euro, not sponsored. This kit should pretty much come with everything we need for this project. I'm hoping we're not gonna use this filter to open the cooler in the back, as well as these power steering fluids and whatnot. What I'm particularly focused more on are these cam magnets right here. These are the cam magnets. That's the part number. I'm gonna open it. And these are surprisingly quite pricey for how small these parts are. This is the cam magnet right here. That's a brand new one. Exactly identical. I believe there's probably a few revisions over the past couple of years. Now from Bosch, this is the cam position sensor. It's a little plug and taking a close look at it, you can see there is a small gasket around the area and over time that gasket just slowly gives up and that's where all the oil seepage comes in in front of your engine. First screw out. I can take this out with just a wrench. Yep. So I got one bolt out. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and access the camshaft position sensors first. <coughs> So once we access this, we should be able to access the bottom portion. This is the first camshaft position sensor. It looks okay. There's no seepage on the bottom. Wrench it is. Now these wrench are pretty handy dandy. All right. A little bit hard to take out. That's fine. There you go. And then the bottom. All right, so this is the first cam magnet we took out. You can see that gasket part over there. There's a little bit of a gunk of oil. So that just shows you that's the leaky part. We just have to remove cam position sensor. Pop it out like that. Clean that out. Now we just have one more on the left side and we'll see what happens after. Let's take this out. Yep. Oh, slowly, we got everything out. First cam magnet going in. Fits like a glove. Just have to put it in place. So looks like everything is in place. Not too tight. Again, we're gonna do the same concept. Make sure it's just snug fit. Second one is located behind this sea of wiring. Plug everything in. Not too tight, just enough. It's better to be loosened than over tightened. Here. All right, starting it up. Let's see how it goes. There you go, got it out. And wow, look at that dirt and grime of oil. I'm gonna do the second one. This should be pretty much Easy. Oh shit. 
bad news. One of the harness clips just completely snapped off. That's for the camshaft position sensor. You can probably try this with a Ziploc, tighten it up so that way we don't have to worry about unplugging on a road trip or something like that. It's exactly why you don't want to mess with 14 year old harness. Massage these out. Perfect. Second one, the bottom. Thank goodness I have small fingers. I really do not want to lose this screw. Got it, got it. Magnet. And slowly pry it out. Okay. I'm still bummed about the fact I broke the harness clip, but you can always fix that. That's not a problem. Full concentration on this last cam magnet. Nope, I can't fit it. Time to wrench. Luckily, these are all hand tight. This last bolt right here, that's that last bolt right there, you can barely see on the camera. You're going to have to remove it somehow. And I'm trying to figure out a way to do it. Oh wait, I got, a, I got a grip of it. The bolt's almost out. Gotta be very careful not to uh, misplace it. Last bolt, finally. Boom. Uh-oh, stuck. I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew the cap for the reservoir of the power steering, and boom, there you go. First cam plug going in. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the bolt that's damn near impossible to put back. So, can't forget about the cap for the reservoir. Pinching away. Plug this in place. And then we're gonna go ahead and start. Just gotta be careful with this one. So far, what I've learned is that if you have a little bit on the bigger side of things when it comes to your fingers, you may have to remove the reservoir. However, if you have a very skinny finger like me, you could just do a lot of twisting and all that, especially at the bottom right here in the bottom right cam magnet, which the bottom screw is all the way down there. This one's also quite hard, but we didn't have to remove the oil cooler and the oil filter. Plug this back in like so. We got it. No oil seepage so far. This pretty much concludes the video. We did cam plugs last week. Now we did cam magnets and camshaft position sensor. Now we're gonna go ahead and tackle the performance upgrades. Stay tuned. We're going to be working with the suspension, sway bars, and even a tune. So that way we could really wake this chassis up. I really appreciate your support and I can't wait for the next video and all that to come. I'm glad that we didn't have to do power steering fluid flush or all sorts of oil cooler removal because that would have been an extra step that we didn't have to do. But luckily, I can always just return all those parts to FCP Euro or maybe even do another video of how to do a fluid flush on the power steering. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys later.